Hello, good day and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kisma Givans. I'm a former Seventh-day Adventist and a, and a Christian apologist. And today, today we'll be looking at the coronavirus, right? And the title for my video is How Should the World Respond to the Coronavirus? How should the world respond to COVID-19? This is what we will be talking about in this video. Everyone is being, um, you know, up and down about Corona. Everyone is talking about Corona. Every time you turn on your TV, you hear about Corona. Everyone is speaking about Corona, even on their channel, YouTube channel and so forth. Therefore, it is only fitting that I do the same as well. And so... The message that I'm going to give to you is going to be distinct from the others. I'm very certain that perhaps I may be the only one who is giving a message like this where Corona is concerned. This message is a message of warning and it's a message of encouragement at the same time. What I'm going to do is, I'm, is that I'm going to start with the encouragement first, right? And for the encouragement, we are going to turn to the book of Psalms. Chapter 91, right? Psalms chapter 91. And it reads thus, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, that is David speaking, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall, be, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thee. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he, that is God, have set his love upon you. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will I deliver him. This is God speaking now. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and, we, and show him my salvation. Now, this is a strong word of encouragement, you know. But this is conditional, right? All this protection from his angel, wherein he said in verse 11, he shall give his angel charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And verse 10, no plague shall come nigh your dwelling. There is a condition to this. And here is the condition. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord which is my refuge. That is David. You have made the Lord which is my refuge. Even the most high. Your habitation. Right? So this, 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 this assurance of protection here. It is conditional. Right? You must put your trust in God. In order for you to get this, um, um, get this protection, you must make God your habitation. And once you make your make God your habitation, He will cover you with His feathers. So you need not worry about the plague of Corona that is going around. No, you need not worry about it. If you are an unbeliever, listen to this video. Right? What you should do is to surrender your life to the Lord. Make him your habitation and he will protect you from this deadly virus. If you're a Christian who already have given your life to the Lord, what I say to you is what the Bible say to you. Put your trust in God. David said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. 
Surely he will deliver me, deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the nice and pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust. Right? This is my message of encouragement to you. Both the sinner and the unsaved. The sinner give your life to the Lord. The unsaved trust in him and none of this plague will come nigh your dwelling. This is what Psalms 91 is saying to you. So I, as a Christian, I'm not really worried. I'm not worried about the whole corona thing. Right? As I'm not come nigh my dwelling. Now, I'm not saying to you that you should take up yourself and not take the necessary precautions by going, when you're going on the road, walk with your sanitizer and do whatever necess it is necessary in order to protect yourself. You should. And here comes the warning that I, that, 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 that I will be giving to you, right? I have, I have about three videos that I want to show you on one pic, on one picture. Two of the videos is 30 minutes long. One of them is 50 minutes long. And I have a picture that I want to show you, right? And this is, 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 is to give an illustration so that I can better show you the warning that I have to give you. The whole corona thing, it is like a double-edged sword. Why I say it's a double-edged sword? For me, because school is out and I'm in a school system, I have to stay at home. You understand? I'm awarded with time to figure out a lot of things and to do a lot of things. I can make connections with whom I haven't made connections with for a long time. Whether it be via phone call and so forth. So it awards us with time on our hands to search our own souls and to look at our standing uh, uh, to, uh, with God, to evaluate our relationship with God. Right? Any loose ends that we have can be tied up now because of the time that we have on our hand. That's the good thing about it. The bad thing about it is that the economy may very well crumble because of this. Not only, not only the economy, but persons are capitalizing on the whole coronavirus. People are using it to commit crime because now we can wear masks and things on our face. Right and so forth in order for the for, for the protection of the spread of the virus. And once upon a time, when a police officer would come to you and say, "Why you have this mask in your face? It look like a robber." No, you can do it and cover your face and so forth and easily commit crime and get away with it. So persons are taking advantage of the whole corona thing, which is why I'm saying to you to be careful on the streets. Right, be careful of criminals. Some criminals will come at your house and say they're checking some things under the Ministry of Health and so forth because of the Corona saga and all kind of things, right? So people are using it to commit, in, commit crime. But the emphasis of my video today is to talk about so-called prophets and teachers who are using it for their own their, for, for, for their for their own gain. This is what I want to talk to, right? So I'm I'm going to show you the videos that I have to show you now. Right? Beginning with this one. This one is a short. This is, I'm going to choose the mildest to the most extreme of them. Right? And take a look at this. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's hold hands together and just pray. <laughs> hold elbows together and pray. Huh? <laughs> oh, I see. Listen, I prophesy to you, it will not come near you. In the yes, so you see that video, right? Do you see the man was jokingly saying to his church members to hold hands, right? And then he switched and said, "Hold elbows. You can hold. You can boom your elbows like this together, right? In order to greet each other or something." And then he concluded by saying he prophesied, he's going to prophesy that Corona will not come near them. Right? Now, the thing that I want to point out to you, you call these type of preachers charismatic preachers. They place faith over logics and common sense and wisdom. You understand? So they say, oh, I pray that this is not going to happen to you and so forth. But they don't have this authority to pray and say, this is not going to happen to you or this is going to happen to you. They don't have that authority to say that, right? 
You know this Jesus prior when he prayed just before he, uh, he was to be crucified. He said nevertheless not my will but your will be done. If it is that God decides that this is how you're going to go, that's how you're going to go. So you have no right to say you're prophesying that this is not going to come. This is not going to come near you. Right? No one can say it was prophecy because each time you pray, you have to say according to God's will. You understand? So this is what I'm warning, um, warning you about because you don't want to leave in the minds of persons, be, um, right? Thinking that because my pastor prophesied that it's not going to come near me, I can be careless and not take necessary precautions. Because what's going to happen? You may very well end up getting the disease. Right? So this is what I wanted to point out to you. But this is the mild one. You know? I say I'm going to sh um, send from the mildest to the most extreme out of all of them. Now check out this one. I am going to China to go and deal with coronavirus. Amen. I am going prophetically to destroy coronavirus. Amen. I am going to China. I want to destroy coronavirus. Amen. Give me children there. Give me children there. Where there is a prophet, people will not die. Amen. When there is a prophet, people will not die. Amen. I cannot be a prophet. I am in this world and. Uh, yeah, so with this one, you see where a pastor basically say that he's going to go to China and to destroy the coronavirus, right? And what we saw happen is him being hospitalized. So the image of that, of that video is basically depicting him being hospitalized after having went to China with the attempts to destroy the coronavirus, Right, he says he's going to prophetically go there and destroy the coronavirus. Now, the picture that is shown on the video, I am not certain if that picture is, is a picture of him actually hospitalized because of corona. There are some news going around that say it may very well, that picture may very well be, um, may very well be a long time picture, right? I am not certain. But one thing is, one thing we are sure of. Is that the words, what he said in the video, that much is certain. That part is not a lie. Now, there are two things to say about this. If indeed that he did went to China, did go to China, right? With the attempt to, to, to destroy the coronavirus and he's been hospitalized because of it. What this should say to you is that he is indeed a false prophet. Deuteronomy 18 verse 22 says, If a prophet prophesy in the name of the Lord, if the thing does come true or come to pass, that prophet prophesy falsely. He prophet of he prophesy of his own accord. You understand? So it wasn't God who was speaking to him. He prophesied of his own accord, thereby making him a false prophet. Right? That is one. And if that is the case, I do pray for his speedy recovery. You understand? I pray for his speedy recovery. Right? No, if it is that he, he, he did not become hospitalized because of it, he did not go to China to destroy the coronavirus. This still suggests that he's a false prophet. He's saying that he's going to prophetically go and do something and he chooses not to do it. Perhaps he realized that that is blind faith. You understand? No. To protect yourself. Now let's look at the other. Fear of this. This coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text the give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off in the, and stick it under the door or something, right, you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. Discernment alone should tell you that this man does care nothing whatsoever about anyone's salvation. All he's concerned about is his money. Right? That is all he's concerned about is money. I mean, you could have said much more to, to, to persons about Corona. All you had to say is that, oh, Jesus is your source and whatever you do, make sure that you show your tithe 
and and you're a, oh gosh, come on people, come on people. Discernment alone should tell you that this man is a complete thief. You understand, Kenneth Copeland is basically known as uh, known by many as to be one of those prosperity preachers who preach riches and so forth, who makes great revenues of his congregation and so forth. Kenneth Copeland. Last one, astonishing one that I have to show you is, is, is a picture, right, which shows a man, a, a, a preacher saying that those who show tide are protected from coronavirus, right? And here he shows Psalms 91. Psalms 91 says those who show tide are protected by coronavirus. But I'm sure when you read Psalms chapter 91, you saw in the chapter, you can read it again when I, uh, when I read it, nothing in it suggests anything about you doing anything in order to get God's protection. Did it? No. He did not say anything about you doing anything in order to get God's protection. What Psalms 91 does say is that I will say of the Lord, verse 2, is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And after David said in him will I trust, it lists out some things that the Lord is going to do for him, the one who put their trust in the Lord. And you find that from verse 3 goes onward to verse 8. In verse 9, it emphasizes again that these things will happen to you. Why? Because you made the Lord, right? You made the Lord, which is David's refuge, even the most high, your habitation. So because you made the Lord your habitation, all these things happen for you. Protection and security. You understand? Nothing in it, no, nothing in it suggests anything about you doing anything in order to get God's protection. Read the entire chapter. It doesn't suggest anything about you doing anything. What it does suggest... It's about you having faith, you putting your trust in God. Not showing any tide, not keeping Sabbath, not speaking in tongues, not just in a particular way, none of that sort. It just simply say, make God your habitation, put your trust in him and he will cover you from the, from the pestilence and so forth. That is what Psalms 91 says. You can see clearly that that man is a thief. He's a false prophet and a false teacher. And this is why I give this message to you to say to you to, to be careful of these individuals. Because persons are panicking and in fear, these false prophets and false teachers take advantage of that. These persons are running and turning to the church for refuge because of their fear. And these men basically taking advantage of the vulnerable, the ignorant and persons who don't know their Bible. Right? I'm not saying to you now that you ought not to throw tide. This is not the emphasis of my message. What I'm saying to you is that you throwing those things, you don't throw it with, with an intention to get protection from God. Right? Whether or not you throw it, once you place your trust in God, He will protect you from these things. You throwing tide is in response to God goodness towards you and not showing tide in order to get his protection. No, Psalms 91 simply says, trust in him and he will cover you from all of these things. Right? Now with the example of the man who, 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 who says he was going to go to China and so forth. This is very much something that you should pay attention to. If it is that he went there and he's hospitalized because of it, it should teach Christians to be sensible, right? Genuine and authentic faith doesn't take careless risk, right? Let me repeat. Genuine and authentic faith do not take careless risk. You cannot see a house on fire, right? And say you are going to go into the fire and say, oh, God is going to cover me from the fire. That's not how it works. You are going to get burned. All over the book of Psalms, it tells you that you should know the book of Proverbs. It teaches you to be wise. Right? The Bible says, be wise as a serpent. This is what the Bible says. Be wise as a, serp uh, as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So you must be wise. You cannot carelessly put yourself at risk and then expect 
God to protect you. It is as though you are tempting, tempting God, which you should not do. So this is my message to you. The last thing I'm going to say to you is that there are a lot of persons, especially cult groups and so forth, who are using Corona in order to scare people into their church in order to keep them in despite the false teaching that they are teaching they are saying to you do this to be protected from corona no it's not the time to leave our church it's going to be over soon and so forth in order to keep you ensnared in their cult you understand you can go to this church or that church as long as they're preaching the true gospel and they're preaching christ and you will be protected from corona the Spirit of God is not subject to the Seventh-day Adventist Church or the Pentecostal Church, Jehovah Witness, Methodist or Anglican. You can go into any one of them, worship God and at the same time receive protection from Corona. Right? This is not the end. Despite what you're seeing happening, this it's far too soon to say that this is the end. So those fear mongers who are instilling fear into people, they should stop it. This is not the end. And I'll confirm that from Matthew chapter 24. This is the last thing that I'm going to say to you. Matthew chapter 24. When asked what, what, what the sign of the end shall be, this is what Jesus said. In verse, verse 4 onwards, he says, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's happening. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Right? See that he be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. How many wars do we hear about for us to be confirmed that we are even at the brink of the end? Not many. Next thing that he says, nations shall rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms. Do we see that happening yet? No. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. Do we see that? Yes. But not to the level from, for, for us to be convinced that this is the end. No, no. All these are beginning of sorrows. They will deliver you to be afflicted. They shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. Are we as Christians hated by all nations as yet? No. Are all of us persecuted um, to, to, to that degree which is depicted here? No. Many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Right? All of these things, if you looked at the entire chapter of Matthew chapter 24, all of these things are not happening as yet for us to say that this is the end now. So don't let anyone scare you or guilt trip you. You understand and so forth. Surely we are, go we are getting closer and closer to the end, but this is not the end as yet. Nevertheless, I encourage you, if you have not given your life to the Lord as yet, now is the time for you to do so, right? You know not when the hour of death will be coming to you and a dead man cannot repent in the grave. So now is the time for you to give your life to the Lord. If you are a Christian, stay in the faith, right? Take the necessary precautions. This is for both sinners and Christians alike. Take the necessary precautions. Keep safe, trust in God, and He will do the rest. I hope you enjoy this video. Write, like, comment where necessary, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever I make new uploads. And last but not least, share this video with whom you know will benefit from an amazing video like this.